We always see problems but not enough solutions. Without real actionable steps, we don't know how to actually fix the issues we are presented with. While we have thousands of different areas to work on, if we just fix a small list of very important ones, we can improve the economy and prosperity by leaps and bounds. Are you ready? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. This has been a highly requested video to get into actual solutions on how to solve the crisis that we are presented with. Now, it's not a comprehensive list of every single thing that needs to be done. This is just a handful of very important items. You may have your own, and if so, please list them in the comments below. Understand that some of these can be done overnight, and in fact, some of them should be done overnight. Others may take five or even 10 years to complete. So I'll get into that today, but first, I want to talk about the issues that we have. This is from one of the congressmen, and he's outlined the wasteful spending list. There are so many of these lists all across the internet, but this one is just an example. All right, $24 million. This is spent on internet routers. They put them in libraries and schools and spent 24 million, and this is $22,600 for each router. The unfortunate thing is that they put them in rural areas where there is literally, in some cases, only one computer and one individual able to use that computer at any given time. Yet these had the support for literally thousands of people to be connected to them. And that's where you have waste. Because they always get a bid, they put it out there, they have all of the same thing because the government likes to standardize everything, and I understand why they would do that. But in this case, it doesn't make any sense, and they've wasted so much money, $24 million. I'm sure they could have reduced that amount significantly. And this is just one very, very small example, okay? Look at this. The Waste Report. Rand Paul puts this out regularly, and this is not a joke. Dancing with the Cars, the National Endowment for the Arts spends tens of thousands in taxpayer funds to support choreographed dances with vehicles and machinery. And I, I'm not kidding, That's, this is real. It should be a joke, but it's not. There are so many different examples like this that exist. Look back a few years ago. We had the financial crisis, and then came the bailouts. We had the TARP bailout, and then there was different programs that they were trying to do to basically bail out different sectors. In this case here, we had cash for clunkers. This is another way that they bailed out the car companies. They had to give them billions of dollars, but they also needed to use this cash for clunkers program. It didn't work, they admitted that later, but here we are. And how does this work? Whether it's TARP, cash for clunkers, or any of the other silly programs that they've set up, they have been able to take our money, tax dollars, and funnel it to corporations. That's the way it works. If these car companies could not be profitable for a period of time, that's okay. But because you have these safety nets set up everywhere, that's when you have this problem because then more and more is demanded. Demanding here, demanding there. If people didn't have that safety net or that feeling, they wouldn't be able to do anything. They wouldn't be able to you know, feel the same fear that they do today because they're saying, hey, why are you not acting? Why are you not taking care of this? Why are you not bailing them out? Why are you not fixing the problem? 
when government should be stepping back and saying, you know, this isn't really our doing, this isn't what we should be uh, getting our hands into. But people always demand that their government fix everything. And that's the root cause of so much, that they just keep on taking on more and more. That's not a good thing. Expanding government is not good. We need to limit it as much as possible. No matter who we have leading these different governments around the world, all the way from the top, all the way down, through the parliaments and Congress, people demand more and more. But I think we should have less and less. Make the government do less. Shrink it, take back our money. That's our money. And it's being wasted. Now here you have all the different sectors. The government of the United States. You have the three branches. Right here. And then it goes down. All the different departments. Different areas. Well, there are a few, namely, just one that popped out, the FDIC. It's a fairly large institution, yet it can't actually do what its intended, um, you know, its intention is. They would be there to backstop any losses for individuals in the bank. But if one bank went bankrupt, they wouldn't be able to bail it out. So as far as I'm concerned, it shouldn't exist. There shouldn't be any people working in this department. Quite frankly, if they're not able to do what their intention is, why do they even exist? It doesn't make sense. There are other departments such as the NSA, and a host of other alphabet agencies that can either be eliminated right away or reduced to the absolute bare bones. They're spying on foreign governments and uh, citizens. That has to end immediately. That would save billions of dollars every single year. All right. Now, I'll cover another point in just a moment here. One of the most important things that needs to be done is to audit the Federal Reserve. And I know what you're thinking, but hang on just a second. We need to audit the Federal Reserve. We need to know what they've done. And this goes right back to their introduction, the Federal Reserve Act back in 1913, but they actually started a few months later in 1914. I want to know every single thing that they've done since then up to today. Every single thing. Now, they actually say on the Federal Reserve's own website, yes, they actually are audited. But what's not audited is that which is important. We don't know who they gave their money to. We don't know who gets it, when they got it, how much, and all that. There was a very limited audit of the Federal Reserve. It was found to um, you know, $16 trillion. We all know about that. So number one, step one, audit the Federal Reserve. Prove that they are doing things that we need to know about on a go-forward basis. We need to understand exactly who they're giving money to. And then step two, we need to repeal the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. It is essential. But in order to get to the point where we can repeal it, we need to audit it first. That's a great way to do it. Let's do the two-step. Everybody loves the two-step, and I think in this case, it works. First, we have the evidence we need to get rid of it, and it'll be a lot easier. You're going to get more signatures. You're going to get a lot more public knowledge, public awareness on what exactly the Fed is. Most people wouldn't even know. And then by the a time we are able to see, look, they gave it to this foreign government and this institution and that individual and this, you know, they would be able to see that in the audit. Some of the papers would probably cover that at least for a day. 
and then people would be aware. Now, when it comes through the system to actually repeal the act, we would have some good information to go by. So I do believe in the two-step. The Federal Reserve would go away, and we would have what a lot of people want is to have sound money backing up this monetary system. All right. It was once like that. It's been many decades. Hasn't been like that. I'm willing to concede just for now because, of course, some of these things may take 10 years to accomplish. But in order to get rid of the Fed, I'd be willing to concede to just have the Treasury deal with all of this business. You could still have your fiat currency, but at the very least, let the Treasury handle it. We don't need a private institution that acts with no transparency whatsoever. At the very least, we would have congressional oversight on this, uh, you know, the Treasury, make it happen that way. And then once that's in place, then let's worry about actually creating a more sound monetary system. But we need things that can be done right away, or at least in a shorter time frame, because this has to be fixed. We can't try and, you know, leap really, really far. We need to just do it in steps. And big steps, surely. And this is the way it has to be done. Now, we have a lot of government figures that are fraudulent. You can see that with the jobs numbers, for example. Now, the jobs numbers need to actually outline what they are dealing with. We need to know how many of these people are being rehired and let go every month or every three months that has to be able to be tracked not just the total number of jobs added this month it's not accurate we need to know as part of those numbers how many of those workers are temporary temporary workers are an epidemic today we need to also look at all of the other numbers that john williams and a few others put together and that is inflation, unemployment, and so many others that are here available to you. They are based on the older models of calculation, whether it's 1990 or some cases 1980. I'm not even talking about changing anything. Just go back to the way it was calculated before. Monetary supply, everything else. We need to know what they are actually at. I don't care about this U3 statistic, for example, or the CPI. That's not real. We need to know the truth. So being able to provide real statistics to the public, to the media, is essential. When there are campaign contributions, when there are donations, when there are lobbyists, all of that information needs to be public. There needs to be one central website where all of this information is kept. So if an individual gets money from somebody or they're a lobbyist to something else, we need to know. It has to be centralized. It is absolutely important because If somebody has to know every different site for every different person, they'll never be able to track it. They'll be able to hide it. And then when you put it in the hands of that person, you know, maybe they'll happen to leave out some important information or maybe their site is out of date, perfectly timed. Maybe the site is down at those times when elections are coming up. No, it needs to be on some sort of centralized database. It's very cheap. It's very easy to have this, okay? They could use a very simple database program and they would be able to upload all of their um, you know, contributions as they come in. They have to be within a certain time frame of actually receiving the donations. It has to be made public. Okay, That's essential. Executive orders, they are an epidemic and they need to be eliminated. All executive orders need to be eliminated. This should be illegal. It should not be allowed. 
All of these things here could be done by something that's called a Congress. A lot of times they're just uh, hanging out, but the gang of 535 needs to actually do stuff. And if that takes a long time to get something put through, that's okay. That's okay. You cannot do executive orders. You cannot do memorandums, which are even worse, to get things done. Doesn't matter if they're positive or negative. You just have to make a stand and you have to say, no, we do not want a dictator. We need to understand that there are so many areas of government that are big and bloated and waste a lot of money and we don't get the services that we need. And healthcare is one of those. You will see hospital lineups that are very typical. You go to a hospital, at least I see it myself in Toronto, but I know this exists in most major cities around the world, where you actually have lineups of people in beds because they can't even get a room. Where is all the money being spent? Stop spending it on internet routers for rural areas and dancing with cars and machinery and spend it where it needs to be spent. Real spending. There's a lot of waste. And I'm not just saying pump more money into healthcare. I'm saying actually make use of the money that is there. And last but not least, there are all these bases set up around the world. In this case here, they're suggesting back in 2015 that there was 800 of them in 70 countries. I've heard much higher numbers, but regardless, shut them down, bring the boys home. That's it. That's it. You don't need them to be elsewhere. You can get to different places in the world in minutes. They have the technology to do it now. Fast ships, fast planes, they can get there. All right? And need I remind everybody that in most of these countries, they're established. They've been there for such a long time. There's no need to do this. A lot of these places, they're being given billions of dollars a year. So I'm sure they can handle themselves. This is one big, big way to save money today. Now, as I said before, this is not a comprehensive list. This is just some ideas on how we can actually resolve the crisis today. Many people want to know solutions, solutions, solutions. Well, here we go. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, it helps to support this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. Last but not least, if you found this video informative, I know that you will find my books, The Money GPS and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can actually flip through these books. All you need to do is go over to Amazon. There are links in the description and it will take you over there. There's a look inside feature where you can actually flip through the pages of these books to see if you like them. Take care.